Hey guys, it's me, Frames. Today I'll be commentating my speedrun of the HTML remake of the World's Hardest Game 3. So, what is this thing? Well, the original World's Hardest Games were made in Flash, and a few years before browser support for Flash ended, Cool Math Games asked the creator to remake his game in HTML5 so they could still host the game on their site. They did not ask him for any of the sequels. Instead, they took the code of the first game and tried to make the others themselves. The result is extremely rushed and feels almost like a bootleg. World's Hardest Game 2 has an impossible level. World's Hardest Game 4 is unfinished. But World's Hardest Game 3 is actually playable, kind of. Let's begin. In this commentary, I'll be going over my experiences with this game, some of the notable differences compared to the original Flash version, and most importantly, I'll be explaining all the glitches that I'm doing throughout this run, which is already coming up right now. As you can see, this glitch is very powerful, and I'll be performing it a lot throughout the run, so I'm going to explain it in detail right now, and I'll go over the variations once they come up. So each level in World's Hardest Game 3 has multiple rooms, and there are so-called gates that will take you to a different room when you touch them. The gates are positioned quite far from the edge of the screen in this game, so you can go a bit off screen before you touch one. The ones on the right side are the furthest, so much that they barely allow you to squeeze in between the gate and the wall, which ends at the edge of the screen. And once you're in this precise position, you can move up or down as far out of bounds as you want. And since gates always cover the entire side of the screen, you can also enter the new room from whichever position you want, which is what I'm going to do here. I'm moving up, and I'm also holding left the whole time. I perform the trick by switching from right to left, which lets me quickly see whether I made it past the wall or not. So when I feel I've reached the position I want, I press right to touch a gate. The game puts me at the left side of the screen, at the same height, so now I'm inside a wall. The game wants to prevent me from moving inside walls, so if I move anywhere in this position, the game will snap me backwards to get me outside of the wall again. It will always move me to the opposite direction of where I just tried to move to, so if I were to press right, the game will snap me back to the left side of the wall, which puts me inside the gate and takes me back to the first room. If I press left instead, I end up on the right side of the wall, which is all the way over here. This is called a zip, similar to glitches in other games with the same name. Right now I need to be holding left, which is exactly what I've been doing this whole time. Conveniently, in this game if you hold both right and left, the right arrow key will take priority which allows me to simply tap right while holding left instead of quickly changing directions. So to reiterate, while holding left, I press right to enter this room and I let go after one frame, which means I'm holding left as soon as I'm inside the wall and the game will zip me all the way to the right. And now I'm in a similar spot. So if I tap right again while still holding left, I can zip again. And because the wall ends here, this is where I end up right next to one of the keys that I need to beat this level. So now that I've opened these doors, I can head back to the... Oh no, I died. I have to do it all again. Just kidding. There's another glitch. The doors are still gone even after I die. They might be visible again, but they're not actually there. Sadly, I couldn't show it off right now, but you'll see it later. So this room is a good place to talk about hitboxes. As you might have noticed, the player is a bit smaller than he was in the original, and his hitbox is a lot more lenient as well. This makes much of the rooms a lot easier, like this one. The hitboxes are so tiny that it's not possible to go diagonally between two enemies. This is pretty precise, I have to make sure I'm lined up correctly. It's not even that much faster, but I did it anyway because it looks cool and this trick will also come into play later. Now we're going through the doors and actually not skipping this entire room for ones, which is good because I need the coins here. In this room we can talk about the downside of tiny hitboxes, which is that coins are way too small. The coins on the right were moved, making them easier, 
but the coins on the left remain in the corners and I won't be able to collect them if I hug the walls, so I have to go a bit out of my way and round the corners a bit more, while I also have to make it to the end in time. Now collecting these coins last is actually important, since getting all the coins open the door, which updates all the door collisions in the level and makes all the other doors solid again. This means if I die in this part, I'll be stuck behind a door and I need to reset. One very quick final zip just to get through this room a bit faster. I would have preferred to go a bit further down to zip all the way here, but whatever. And level one is already done. The other four levels will take a little bit longer. Now level two starts out with an annoying cycle, which is fine because it's also annoying in the original. Now coming up is an insta zip, which works because you can enter the new room while inside a wall by simply holding up and right. You'll move up for a frame before entering the new room, which puts you just a tiny bit into the wall above, enough to be able to zip. The timing for this trick is weird. I need to switch from holding right to holding left a frame later, and I need to start going right again immediately after. It's actually kind of easy to do this by accident while trying to go out of bounds, which is what happened in the final room of level 1. After this, I could do another zip to skip to the bottom half of this room, but instead, I'll go up. I'll touch the top of this area, and since there's no room or gate above it, the enemies will freeze. And for whatever reason, once I enter a new room in this state, the game will warp me one room down. And right now I can control at my, where I'm warped, since my height will stay the same. So now I go down a little bit, and then enter the room on the right. And now I'm in the room below C2, where I could zip to the right to get this key quickly, but instead I'm gonna zip to the left, where there's once again no gate or room. The enemies won't freeze, but I'm still going to go warped by the game. And this time to the right side of this room, it's the same principle as the other thing, but slightly different. They're both screen wraps. When I try to go outside of the screen where there's no gate, the player's position will be on the other side when I do go through a gate. Here on the right side, I'm going to do it once again and keep going right for a bit to control where I end up. And here I am on the left side, right above the key, where I can simply press up to zip down to get the key. And once again, I can die after the key, and with that, I've skipped the entirety of that room. Now I start doing the same process before, except I actually do zip to the right, taking me directly to the entrance here. Again, I could have just gone down instead and zipped here, but that's a small window, and if I go too late, I could accidentally screen wrap to C1, where I'd be stuck. You might be wondering why I got the key at the top of this room if I can zip to C3 anyway. But if I hadn't opened this door, I wouldn't be able to go back after getting these coins. I won't be visiting C1 in this run, but I will say that room has a few more opportunities to go diagonally between enemies, leading to some decent shortcuts. Now, this room has a very basic route. I could have had some tight maneuvers, but unfortunately they became obsolete. Now, this bottom part is also on a cycle, namely the enemies that go from left to right. You can't get to the checkpoint in the middle because before they're out of the way. This top section is once again made a lot easier by the smaller hitboxes. Now this part surprisingly works just as well as the original. You need to time your entry well and then you can barely make it. If that didn't work you could still go down to the other section and then go up again to get the coins, which I think is a little slower. Dying after collecting this key isn't worth it, since I would need to collect the coins separately. And it also doesn't work out in combination with what I'm about to do next. So this is a nice little route. I touch the checkpoint over here, and then I collect the key so I can die afterwards without any problems. In fact, this respawn lines me up perfectly to collect both rows of coins at once, which is more precise than you'd think. My movement throughout the room was good enough so that I can barely make it out of here before the enemies block the entrance again. Although going down is a little awkward, but that's fine. The final room is, again, easier than the original. Of course, the top part is less tight, but the ending is just ridiculous. All the enemies move way too slow, and there's even a misplaced one creating a safe spot. And with that, on to level 3, where the game really starts to pick up in difficulty. Not this room though, this one's fairly easy.
here you just hug the wall and eventually you go through. This next room though, while it may seem easy at first glance, it will start to reveal its true horrors once you stay in it for long enough. This is the first of many rooms where the enemy pattern desynchronizes because some of the enemies complete their cycle a tiny bit earlier than others, which adds up over time. Right now I'm fine, but this will pose an issue on the left side later. Now that we're back, we can do a zip to the next room after a bit of a struggle. There we go. Now B3 is another room where the pattern desyncs, which will become apparent near the end. So it's important that I do this room without dying or messing up, even with a couple tight moves here and there. Luckily the majority of the room is fairly easy, since it's faster to go along the wall here, which was also possible in the original. The timing for this isn't tight at all, so it pretty much just trivializes these sections. And right here you can start to see the consequence of the desync. The singular enemies will start moving in the middle of the path, which makes going up and down a lot tighter. If I wait a few more cycles, it actually becomes impossible to go through the middle. And around that time, it also becomes possible to go along the top or bottom. But with this round, I can just barely make it out of the room before it starts to get really bad. Right now, I need to clean up some coins here, because I won't be visiting this room very often. We're also going back towards the left, which is one of the reasons I picked up the key earlier. The other reasons that we need these coins. Now this pattern is a bit finicky, and I tried to get through it quickly, when really I should have just played it safe. I was never good at the right half of this room, on the original, not here either. There's another unfortunate death, just, ch just stop trying to rush it man. Shouts to the missing piece of wall though, it's usually very helpful. No clue this was done intentionally or not. Now here I get all these coins, and if you're wondering about the trick in the original where you can collect every coin on a checkpoint instantly by respawning, that doesn't work in this game since every coin is saved separately. Here I accidentally do an insta-zip back into the checkpoint, which I used to do on the way to B3 until I noticed the proper zip is way faster. Up next will be another instance of screen wrapping to sequence break this part. This would have been a better place to explain the screen wrap, but unfortunately I had to go crazy in 2C3, literally right before this run, messing up my scripts. Anyway, I move right a little and then back up into A2, and I'll end up on the bottom left part, entering A3 early. And embarrassingly enough, I realized right after this run that I could instead go to the left and then go down into A3, which would make me end up right here on the checkpoint. It's okay though, it's just a small time save. I've already lost way more time to deaths earlier. Now this room is fun to improvise, since I generally know where the enemies will be, so I can just move between safe spots without too much trouble. I don't want to be too risky though, since dying loses a lot of time. You might be wondering how I'll get out of this room because the door is still blocking the entrance. Funnily enough, that door is actually the key to my escape. If I exit this room, the game will put me slightly above the bottom of the screen and also slightly inside the door hitbox by a few pixels. If I don't let go of up on the same frame that I enter this room, I'll immediately be pushed out to the bottom of the door. Luckily, I, if I simply hold up and left, the game will instead zip me all the way to the right, and from here I can go down and perform a screen wrap once again, going a tiny bit to the right. If I move up to A2 now, I'm inside the wall to the left of the entrance, from which I can press down to zip upwards into this conveniently placed checkpoint, which is required because of the coins. Now this part is pretty unfortunate. I want to go up immediately, but the pattern desync has just made that impossible, so I have to go all the way to the right instead. Theoretically, with the fastest route and really good zipping, you can just barely make it through, but there was no way I was going to get that consistently, so I decided to just cut my losses and go around. This room is a nice routing challenge and has gone through many iterations over the years. The first half is cool, but the second half gets much crazier. Now here's where the small coin and boxes really show. I pretty much have to do this movement to make sure I get all of them. Now I also skip the key that I no longer need. Because, because this coin section isn't very reliable, I route the return to start at a specific moment in this cycle. So I wait a little bit here. 
Now we're done with A2, so we'll be going to the right now. You might have noticed that we never opened the door that leads to from this room to the next one, but we can just do another zip to get around it. In fact, we can use this zip to skip a whole section of this room, but we still need to go back through it a little to get the coins. It's very close to the checkpoint, especially with the missing enemy down wall. We'll also be getting these coins while we're here, because since this section is going to be skipped later as well. Small death here. Even with tiny hitboxes, you can still get screwed over. This pattern on the right is fairly easy. I always go for the top coins first, even though it really doesn't matter. It's just what I'm used to at this point. The next room can be a bit tricky. I'm doing some tight movement to be able to get all these coins and exit immediately. And for some reason, the enemies that go horizontally were made a lot slower than the vertical ones, which makes getting past those very easy. Now, if you look closely at the middle, you'll notice it's impossible to get that key. The enemy blocks are supposed to move all the way around, not back and forth. Luckily, this key isn't required, since there's a different key that leads to the same room, which we don't even need, since we could just zip in there as well as back out. In fact, that entire room is unnecessary for any percent, and I don't have to care about 100% because that key is unobtainable. So after getting these coins, we're going to go down along this wall and touch the gate on the bottom to get in B2. And since we're still on the right, we can immediately zip into this room to get to the key quickly. This key isn't required. We already zipped past the door it opens. But my route for this room works out better starting on the right. There's a few coins missing here. And the reason for this is that those coins are covered by enemies during the first frame of the pattern in the original. Now we just need to get these coins at the top, since we never went through that part. That's only a slight detour. And a couple more deaths here. Seems I'm still not very good at the right half of this room. And just like that, level 3 is complete. Now level 4 already starts out rough. This pattern is not only difficult, it also desyncs heavily. I used to think it was impossible to get past here until the 7th cycle, but I managed to find a working route for the 2nd cycle. If I die, I'll have to reset the enemies if I ever want to get past the start again. Pattern resetting is possible in this game, but it's a bit of a hassle, and you'll see me doing it later on. This room is fun to route. You might be wondering if it's optimal to collect all the coins on the left right now, since we go through this room again near the end of the level. I can assure you though, this really is optimal. You'll see why later. The next room is much harder, but we'll do an insta-zip past it for now. Now here we have yet another example of coins being annoying. I can't easily collect the middle coins and the ones on the side at the same time. I have to move in a wave-like pattern for this. Now this room is one of the best designs in the original, and it came through pretty well in this version. It's challenging in a good way, and developing routes for this was very satisfying. Right now we're about to enter the most infamous room in this game, 4v4. Just kidding. First we need to go on an adventure. So normally you have to go through these rooms multiple times because of the way the keys are spread out, but I can do a sequence break here and get to one of those rooms early. Wait, how did I get from C4 to C2? There's supposed to be something between those. So let's rewind a bit. And notice how I go downwards here and the enemies freeze. That's right, I'm doing a screen wrap, but now I'm going up instead of right. Because of the screen wrap, when I go up one room, I'll go up twice. Once I'm here, I zip to the right to get these coins earlier. At least that was my plan. I wanted to get out of the wall and then go down. But instead, I pressed down while inside the wall and zipped upwards. So to back it up, I go all the way back down, I re-enter to know where my position is, and do the zip anyway. Getting these coins immediately saves a little bit of time, but it makes the route for this room pretty difficult. I made it above that enemy, so I was on pace, but I still didn't quite get the route I had in mind. But I was able to back it up though. I also ignore the key here, you'll see why later. I could have also zipped into this room way back in B2, but that would skip one trip through C3, while it's more convenient to just go through there and get some coins. Going back to D4, I do the same thing. I go up and freeze the enemies to screen wrap downwards when I transition. In C4, 
I perform a quick zip to get to the bottom faster, similar to what I accidentally did earlier. So I move right into D4, but I don't let go after one frame. So the game zips me to the left and into the gate, putting me in C4 again immediately. Apparently when moving to a new room on the left, the game will not put me all the way into the wall, and a part of the square will stick out on the right side. This means that pressing right in this position will not cause a zip, but I'll just slowly move out of the wall. This means the timing for this right press isn't precise, it just needs to be more than one frame. I think I still got it frame perfect here anyway. And from this position, we just zip to the bottom. Now I could have zipped to the right instead, which would put me at the coins at the top in D4, but instead I zip to the right while at the bottom, which puts me at the coins in the middle. Now this first segment in 4D4 is very short, but even with just this, you can see something is severely wrong here. I also died, so I have to reset the pattern, which I was hoping to save for a little later, but it is what it is. I'll explain the menu later. So in here, all the vertical enemies should be moving at the same speed, but somehow they completely messed this up, and now every few cycles there will be a wall of death, crushing the player when it's going along either top or bottom. This room is another one I like to improvise, although I do have to be careful while transferring between the spinners and the swayers, because sometimes the cycle is bad and I'll be sandwiched by the two different patterns. The room below here only has the key to D2, so we don't need to go there anymore. Now we're heading back to 4D4, and since the pattern is all messed up, I have to reset it. And resetting it can only be done by reloading the page completely and continuing from the main menu. There's a few things to note here. Going over to the continue option is unnecessarily difficult, since some options were removed and the vertical enemies have a lot less space to go between. Because of this, they don't give you enough room for the route that's used in the original, where you just hold right and make it. I used to have to wait for the enemies to come back around to be able to make it, which takes a while. Luckily, I found this alternate route, which is a tiny bit more risky, but significantly speeds up the process. Anyway, back to the nightmare room. Now it's time to get the rest of the coins. It took me a few attempts in this run, so I'll talk a bit about the history. This room was deemed impossible for a while by the community, and it wasn't until someone from the outside got past this room on the bottom that I became determined to prove that it was actually possible to get all the coins in this room and to progress further in the game. The first and most important thing I did was to develop a route for getting all the coins on the top. I couldn't do this by carefully planning out every move ahead of time because the pattern is so unpredictable. So instead I just went for trial and error to see what works and what doesn't and where I need to change the route and in what way I could do so. I had to reset the pattern every time I failed and all this was done before I found the fast route to the main menu, making it a very arduous task. Here I die in the main menu, but it's fine since I can just revert to the older, slower route. Now something funny just happened when I died, the death count for the whole game was set to 1 and the in-game timer was reset. It's fine because the in-game timer doesn't count the menu anyway, so it's meaningless. Now if I were to die many times in the main menu, the pattern will be desynced and I won't be able to continue the game for a while. My only option to reset this pattern is to press space. I can't reload because once I reload after dying in the main menu, I'll have lost all my progress for real. This happened to me accidentally a number of times, even in level 5. So in the past this menu used to be somewhat nerve-wracking, but nowadays it's fine. Now I mentioned I routed the top part of this room first while going from left to right. But that's not what I'm doing right now. So yeah, I decided later to include the bottom zip to the middle coins because it saves time. And this meant I need to wrap the entire room all over again, all with trial and error. Here I used to get these middle coins later, after another pattern reset. But I decided to extend the route I already had to include this as well. This led to a funky little staircase maneuver. With all that behind me, I can finally unmute the sound effects.
Whenever I reload the game, I always mute the music by pressing M because I'd rather not listen to the soundtrack on repeat the entire time. And you can't pause the game in the menu to mute only the music. I do prefer playing with sound effects, so I will unmute them when I'm back in the game, just like at the very start of the run, but only after I've successfully finished this section and don't need to reload anymore. Here I could easily backtrack through this room because I had route first, but I can skip this part instead. I didn't go down because I don't want a vertical screen wrap. I do want the horizontal one though. So I go up, right, and back down to end up all the way on the left of C4, and then I just zip to the checkpoint. In theory, I could go all the way up and end up on the left side of C4 instead, C2 I mean, which would skip this trip through C3 as well. However, with the way the coins are laid out here, I prefer to do this room in two trips. This also means I have to add in a gameplay segment in C2, which I could have skipped by zipping up from the left side. It's fine though, because it's a short segment and it shows off some more messed up enemy patterns. Everywhere in this room is pretty much normal, except on the very left side there's an extra two pair of enemies that move a lot faster than all the other ones. Luckily I have a route and I can get past them without any trouble. Here I'm going to do a horizontal screen wrap again to skip this entire room, but more importantly skip the door and its key. So I've skipped B4 and E5 entirely, which are some of the hardest rooms in the original, but due to the smaller hitboxes, they both become really easy in this version. Here in B1, I go right just a little bit and then go back down and press up to get all the way down. Now for A2. There's a lot to take in here. The first thing you'll notice is there's a ton of enemies seemingly missing. Now this is one of the most intricate patterns in the original and it's very important that it all goes exactly right. So I guess it makes sense that they just completely gave up trying to make it work. But the enemies aren't even the most notable thing that's missing. Currently I don't have all the coins in the level yet, but the coin door is not here. Neither is the door that this key opens to backtrack after the paint. And this paint is actually the culprit here. In the previous levels, I haven't been to the rooms with the paints, so I was unable to show the fact that the doors in those rooms tend to disappear the more rooms you've visited in the level. It doesn't seem to happen for level 1, and my current theory is that doors that are open with cutscenes are unaffected. I have no idea why it happens, but it does make the blue and yellow paints trivial. And over here, well the paint was already trivial, but more importantly it's now possible to reach the final checkpoint without having to collect all the coins. In the original Flash version, the final checkpoint actually will take you to the next level regardless of how many coins you have, but in this version, since the code is copied from World Hearts Game 1, you need all the coins for it to work. If this was not the case, you could skip almost the entirety of level 4 and level 5, but I guess there's no fun in that, so whatever. Also, they added a checkpoint here, not sure why. These enemies are different as well. They move way faster than the original and they don't go back and forth anywhere. To be fair, this would add another layer of complexity. Here's the strange part though. After finishing, they start moving in reverse order, allowing you to go backwards. In the original, the pattern just loops, creating a potential soft lock for going to this checkpoint without having all the coins. In this version, they fixed that? They didn't have to do this. At all. But they did. And it works. Granted, the pattern doesn't exactly loop after this. If you wait a while, it'll just start going in reverse again and again. And at this point, everything starts to break down and the pattern is just impossible. This can be fixed by reloading though, and just the fact that it works perfectly the first two times is fascinating. Anyway, on to the biggest level. You might be expecting a little message to show up here that says level 4 completed, just like for the other levels. Nope, it just gets skipped for some reason. Here if I hold right for the start, I can fit through this gap. This also works in the original. Now this middle spinner is a bit displaced towards the right, making the coins on the right harder to collect. It also makes getting out of the middle on the right side a little tighter. 
Another change is that the spinners down here were simply copied from the top instead of mirrored. And these spinners were made shorter, creating safe spots in the corners. And here I have to accommodate for the different pattern again, going all the way down, where the original route would go the inward path, but the rest of the room is just the same route as in the original. I didn't mess around too much with going between the gaps of these spinners, because despite the smaller box, it's not that much easier in this version, and a death here would still be a decent time loss. And yes, there is in fact a missing wall tile here, even though the outline suggests otherwise. Now here in V4, there's some weird stuff going on. In the original, the spinner has arms that are two enemies wide and that extend and retract as they rotate, covering the entire square area. This is one of the most complicated patterns in the game, so obviously it wasn't recreated. Instead, they made the arms longer to try and still prevent the corners from being safe spots. It did not work. And that's good, because the spinner moves so fast that it would be impossible to collect all the coins otherwise. Also, you might be thinking, why did they add a checkpoint on the left? They actually didn't add it, they moved it. The checkpoint is supposed to be in the middle underneath the door, however, clearly it's impossible to have a checkpoint and a door in the same place. This right side is another pattern that desyncs over time, but there's more than enough freedom to adapt. As long as I'm not being bad, I should be fine. Here I do an insta-zip once again to get to this key immediately. After this, I go backwards and start sequence breaking. I could have started away earlier, but first I needed to get all these keys to make it possible to backtrack later. I'm gonna do another zip here all the way to the other side and still off screen. I'm gonna stay here and go down to freeze the enemies in preparation to go all the way up. Here in C2, I can zip to the checkpoint and then continue. It's actually not possible to zip up or down if it would put you inside a gate, so I have to take advantage of gaps when they appear. Similarly, in C1, I can go all the way up to this checkpoint, and then I'm immediately going to set up for yet another zip into D1 for a small time save. After getting this coin and hitting the checkpoint, I'm already resetting the pattern. That's right, welcome to 5D1, easily the worst room in the game. All the enemies in this room are supposed to have the same timing, instead there are many different timings, so basically everything decent. First I'll be doing the hardest part, I have to make it from here to the right side. On the first cycle this requires a frame perfect in move. If you aren't hugging the right wall by the end of it, you still get hit anyway. And the hard part isn't over yet, I have to survive this corridor, which is fairly tight, and I have to collect the coins and make it back in time which is fairly tight. The best part is, those coins aren't even supposed to be there. In the original, there's a stationary enemy in this position. None of this would have been needed. I had some trouble with this part in the run, which is honestly to be expected. Technically, the frame perfect move isn't required here, but I'm doing it anyway because the best alternative I was able to find required waiting for 50 seconds. Yeah, the pattern just becomes actually impossible for a while. That also means I can't just... That also means I can't just go back the way I came after getting the coins. So instead I need to go take the 100% path with all the keys to the paint room. And I was talking a little too fast there. Here we get to catch a glimpse of the paint room, and if you were expecting the paint to be changing colors like in the original, what were you thinking? Obviously it's just going to be one color, and they arbitrarily picked sign, which is a pretty good one, so I'm not complaining. Actually, a paint that changes colors was added to World of Earth Game 1 HTML, so I'm not sure why they couldn't have just copied that. Now here in the other room, they place a checkpoint on top of some enemies. It's close to the start, so maybe they put it here to act as a shortcut for the backtrack. You could hit it at the top and then respawn on the bottom. Moving on, I'm now making my way down this path. A previous iteration of this route involved doing this twice, getting the coins on a separate trip after opening the path. This new route is more efficient but riskier. At this point, all the patterns in the room have deteriorated so much that I'm forced to reload once again. 
Now I can do the same zip as last time, only without having to collect the coin. I can immediately follow it up with the coins on the top right. The only coins here that require just enough waiting to still be possible on the second cycle. After this, I will reload for every remaining section to collect the rest of the coins somewhat like normal, with a few tight spots here and there. Now for some filler commentary. In the original World Stars Game 3, this room can be interpreted as a remake or variation of level 17 from World Stars Game 1. And here in the HTML version, they removed the quality upgrade and turned it into a more faithful remake, preserving the aspect where you have to beat the level during the first cycle, or else you're forced to wait like 50 seconds. And one more tight maneuver here, similar to a previous one. And the final coins have an interesting change of pace. The vertical enemy isn't going down as far as it should, creating a safe spot corridor. It does go to the same speed and distance as the horizontal enemy, so they actually line up. The one part in this room that's synchronized like it should, except it's not correct, making it one of the tightest parts. And unlike everywhere else, there is zero possibility of this becoming easier if you wait. Anyway, thank goodness we're done with that, and we can unmute the sound effects for the third and final time. Now for C1, where the bottom half got nerfed so much, it's a complete joke. Now if you're looking for a way to bypass the wall on the left side, you might notice a diagonal. While it wouldn't be possible to get through there, it's way too difficult and risky to actually pull that off. And luckily, it's not needed. The player hitbox has reduced to such an extent that this is now possible. Now direct your attention to the door that just opened. Obviously, there is no checkpoint under there. We established this was impossible in B4. Unlike in B4 though, there's no added checkpoint elsewhere to make up for it, even though it would fit pretty well on the bottom entrance here. This makes it a little more inconvenient to practice the top half of this room, but not to worry. See, we're stalling a bit right now. The top half of this room desyncs, and we've spent so long in the bottom half that the pattern is starting to resemble its original state once again. This massively simplified the routing aspect, since now I could just implement movement from the original that I already knew how to do. I could have also just gone with a different pattern, since there's plenty of room for variation, but that comes with an increased risk of dying, and the closest checkpoint is a bit of an asshole to get to and from. As a side note, this pattern also appears in World's Art Game 2, and the HTML version of that level also desyncs. I guess something about it is just a little too hard. Now we zip back up to the checkpoint for safety, since it's possible to accidentally get stuck while trying to go down. Now this room is really fun to improvise, but it does tend to take a while if I die, so I did develop somewhat of a route through here. Since I got all the optional keys in D1, I could use the checkpoint on the left to my advantage, but I won't. Also, stay tuned for a bonus feature at the end, where I actually visit the paint room. Now it's time for not D2 yet, where I did coin room first, going one room down and then back to set up my position, we're gonna zip into D2 at the very bottom, and since this door is still closed, we end up on the right side, beyond the wall. To make it into the actual room, we go a little to the right and then down, so that we end up on the far left side in the coin room, and from here we can once again zip it to the right, back into the level. Here in the coin room, the first thing you'll notice is the checkpoint on the bottom left. Once again, a very out of place addition, although it will actually come in handy. In the original game, there is a trap in this room. After 33 seconds, there will be a wall of enemies coming from the right side. This was also changed here. The wall arrives after 18 seconds from the left side. I don't collect the key to avoid the cutscene because I don't need the door to be open, and I'm also unable to use the key to clip through the enemy wall like in the original. The wall will come back soon, this time from the right side, that's because it's not programmed to return back to its starting position, so instead it'll just go from the end position back to the start. Now if you stay in this room long enough, every fourth time the wall moves, it won't wait out the 18 seconds and move again immediately 
to do a full back and forth sweep, which is kind of funny. And just now the enemies went straight through me because I was on top of a checkpoint, which makes the player invincible. Now this behavior is carried over from World Hearts Game 1, where the player is also invincible as long as it's entirely covered by a checkpoint. You can clearly see this in level 5 and level 9 if you go to the end without having all the coins. Upon exiting the coin room, we enter into a wall because the door is still closed. Holding right will take us to the room on the left, and from here we simply press down to get back up to the checkpoint. Here we can set up yet another zip where I tap right, delay my left press a little bit, watching the enemies to see when it's safe. And now we can do this whole room in reverse. This pattern isn't too hard, but it can definitely get me off guard if I try to go fast. And sure enough, I did have one death here this one. There are multiple options for how to route this part. I could have done the coin room between the two halves of this room. It might have been slightly faster to do that, but I could also cause slightly more time loss by dying. And for aesthetic reasons, I prefer doing both rooms separately. I used to have another strat that didn't end up making it into the run. I would get the key in this room and die, leaving the door intangible so I could zip into the coin room and then get the key in the coin room to make the door tangible again and use it to zip back out. A funny route that got obsoleted by being smarter. Now we're heading back down and unfortunately there's no way to set up a screen wrap here so we just have to walk all the way down this stream. Not a big deal. Having arrived here, we're going to do a zip into the next room, straight to the coins, somewhat similar to 4D2. And once again, we're skipping a key because we don't need it, saving even more time. Pretty satisfying round here. Going back left, now we're finally cleaning up this room, picking up all the coins we didn't get earlier, and taking advantage of the gaps in the enemies. The middle ones are supposed to move back and forth, but that's also a really complex pattern. This room, like the other maze rooms, is somewhat easier than the original, although you still have to wait a bunch. And this time we actually do need the key, since this opens up the right side of V3, and we'll need an easy way to get there. I said this room was easy, but I still die a few times, and that's just me having a skill issue. Now one major change in this room is an added enemy here, creating a wall and making it impossible to cross over above the key forcing us to go down and around and having to deal with the spinners going against you but it's not that hard again usually it's not that hard i was just having a skill issue also that earlier death means i'm thrown off my pre-planned route so i'm improvising now and i'm still managing to get by just fine for the most part well for once, I don't have much to say. Uh, there's two paths here. I go the upper path because the enemies were blocking the lower path. Let me just skip ahead. More cleanup in this room. Here's the one part that I have to go through twice. I spent a tiny amount of thought as to which coins I pick up when, but there may be a better route. Here I could go up to B3 straight away, but first I'm going back over to the checkpoint from where I go up the wall and zip into B3. This is a bit of a detour, but it makes it much faster to get back here after dying, which is pretty likely to happen. Coming up is one of the hardest tricks in this run, and it's not just for speed, it's required to beat the game. So right here, an enemy was added where it shouldn't be, and it's positioned in such a way relating to the moving enemy that it forms a one-way corridor. The player is actually slightly faster than the enemy though, so this pattern on its own would still be easily possible to traverse both ways. However, a problem arises with this enemy. It's lined up in such a way that it will always crush you right here. And of course, the enemies are perfectly synced. Now you might already be thinking about potential ways to bypass this, using the fact that the player can go diagonally between enemies. You could theoretically go right here and survive both of the enemies passing through, but the positioning would be way too precise and there's pretty much no time to set it up. Alternatively, you could go diagonally between the stationary enemy and the moving enemy when it's aligned like this, and that's exactly what we're going to do. 
this move is not only precise in terms of position, it also needs to be timed well. And that's why just this once, I'm going to use pause buffering. I position myself in a certain spot and I pause when the enemy is in a certain spot. And when it looks good, I can start holding down right and unpause. It didn't actually look good then. The pause buffer also means I don't have to start holding both down and right at the same time, making the diagonal much simpler. It took me a few attempts to get it this time, although I have gotten it first try a few times. I never really thought about this, but it is convenient that this is done at the bottom of the screen and just barely not covered up by the map in the pause menu. So when I finally make it past, I immediately pause again to ensure that I let go of down in time. Many times in the past, I've successfully done the diagonal and then proceeded to instantly run into the enemies because I have to let go of down much quicker than I think. So I just quickly pause to not have to rely on the reaction time. After this, the pattern is pretty smooth sailing. If I want, I could take it safe by just doing extra loops to stall. It's still very possible to die here though, if I'm even a little bit careless. Now speaking of enemies being added where they shouldn't be, there's this wall on the right side of the room, which luckily doesn't have any repercussions other than making the key on the right even more useless than it already was. Backtracking through this room once again, where of course it's still possible to die. If I wanted to be safe, I could instead do some sort of zip towards the right for a checkpoint, but that just means more backtracking. If B3 didn't have any misplaced enemies, I could have skipped this room as well as another key. Now it's time for the much easier left side of B3, and since that door is still closed, we have to zip in there. Now I actually went down and set it up, and I set up for a screen wrap, which just makes this more consistent. Technically, I don't need to do this since there is room above the door to zip, but I don't want to accidentally set up the screen wrap in the opposite direction where there's no existing room. Now this pattern is once again much easier than the original, at least it should be, <laughs> but I had a skill issue again. If you look closely, you'll see it's slightly displaced from where it should be, or even though there's some enemies missing over there, it's not possible to use a diagonal for a shortcut. That's okay though, we won't be needing it. Once we leave this room, we'll be placed just far enough down to be slightly inside the door that's still closed. And from there, we can press right and then up to zip right back to where we started. And then from here, we can once again set up another screen wrap, this time to go up instead of right, skipping this door. And now it's time for the final stretch. So here in A3, the first thing to do is go to A2 immediately. Don't look at spoilers. We just pressed right to screen map, went back down, zipping into A3, but on the left side, we just skipped the entire room, although we still need to backtrack for the coins. Luckily, there is yet another checkpoint added here, inside all the enemies. I don't know why they didn't simply place it further up, but yeah, another opportunity to see how being fully inside a checkpoint makes you invincible. So this room isn't that interesting, just easier than the original. Although there is some weird stuff going on here, one of the enemies that's supposed to be going around is going back and forth. Not too big of a deal though, even if I couldn't skip this room, it is still possible to sneak past it. Now for the second to last room, which is a bit of a mess. The left side is fairly accurate, except that one of the enemies has escaped containment. We've got not one, but two unwarranted checkpoints, so we go past the first one since it's not needed. Or so I thought. I, this is the first time I've died in that part in any of my runs. I guess my hubris finally got the best of me. That checkpoint in the middle is actually really helpful because we get to be invincible while picking up these coins. Now this section can be pretty brutal because a lot of the enemies desync, but with this round, getting to the checkpoint as soon as possible and then starting from there, it's not too bad to deal with. Especially because you can do this. Now the entrances to these middle and right section are on the wrong side and the rightmost enemy of the right section is displaced, creating a big opening to go down easily. And of course to top it all off, none of the rooms in the final stretch are grey, 
since World Stars Game 1 doesn't have any gray, and adding a whole new color palette is just too hard. All in all, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. And now for the epic finale, and if you were expecting speech bubbles to suddenly appear after being absent throughout the entire game, you'll be disappointed. With no dialogue and no lore, the ending sequence becomes pretty confusing. You're just being trapped for seemingly no reason, and with no stakes either, the last checkpoint was literally right before entering this room. The enemies are closing in on you and suddenly they stop for no reason, and then after a very long wait, the enemies in front let you through. It's a heavily stripped down version of the ending from the original, but weirdly enough, I think it does have some mysterious charm of its own. And that's it. The HTML version of the World's Hardest Game 3, beaten in under 30 minutes. Remember, the in-game timer was reset halfway through the run, so it's inaccurate. I'd like to give a shout out to Green Dragon ZG7 for being one of the very few people to play this game and actually collecting some coins in 4D4, showing me that that room might not be impossible after all. He's the one that inspired me to try to beat this game way back in 2020, which I managed to succeed in, and I've got a recording of that linked in the description. And now, years later, I was finally able to present a somewhat optimized speedrun. There is definitely still quite a bit of time to save, but I'm happy with the sub 30. And now for the bonus content, a quick little speedrun of the paint in level 5. Instead of taking the long route, I just go over the enemies. There's enough room! And unlike in the original, the paint actually does respawn after you die. Although, it still remains unlocked in the main menu, so you can just change back to it. Well, that's it for me. I do have to give one last shout out to the severely underpaid Cool Math interns that made this game. They messed up in many places, but they sure tried their best. And in the end, they were able to produce a game that's endlessly entertaining, and despite everything, possible to complete. Thanks for watching.